Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the good news. Thank God for Jesus this morning. Lord, we know that you are in the blessing business. Help us, Lord, this day to be the people you are calling us out to be. Good morning, Palestine United Methodist Church. Good morning, Facebook Live. It's good to be in the land of the living. Amen. I'm still wearing my mask. I hope you are too. Uh, the numbers are increasing every day. So it's safe to say mask is on, hand sanitizing, amen, and social distancing. Uh, it helps when you have to go out in a crowd, be careful. Amen. No hugging and kissing and shaking hands and all that. Nod your head. And uh, people should understand that. We're not afraid of them. We're not afraid of the virus. We're just doing just that the CDC says to show that uh, this helps. This helps. So be careful while you're out there. Amen. Uh, we're we're, we're not opening yet. Amen. We need to have a conversation about when we're going to open and how we're going to do it. As I said before last week, I, I need phone calls. I need your input on it. You know, this is not a, a, a pastor's only decision. I, I want uh, you to be included in this. Amen. But in the meantime, let's keep praying. Let's keep praying in the meantime. Uh, Thank God for you know, Mississippi. We finally, uh, the flag is coming down. Amen. And, and, and we're proud that they are going to create one to represent all of Mississippi. Amen. Have no, I, I, I understand that it has a lot to do with some heritage. Amen. But uh, it doesn't represent the whole state of Mississippi. So God is still sitting high on the throne. Amen. Uh, we just have to keep praying. Amen. Amen. Today is 4th of July weekend, and it's probably have been a different 4th of July for many of us. Amen. But the thing about it is stay aware of your surroundings and, and be encouraged today. Watch and see what the numbers look like in 14 days. And then you can make your own decision about COVID-19. Amen. Amen. As I get ready to pray this morning, I, I want to uh, pray for all the sick and shut in, all the bereaved families, which are many. Amen. I want to pray for all the COVID-19 patients, the one that had it and have recovered from it, uh, the one that got it and don't know they got it. I want to pray for us all this morning because prayer will change things. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above, humbly you came to the earth. You created all for the sake of love. Oh Lord, we love you, Lord. Because you are the God of love. You are the God of grace. Your grace, Lord, is sufficient for us. For it was your grace that saved us. Your mercy, Lord, is new every morning. And your tender mercies are from everlasting to everlasting. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now as much we know how. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for watching over us all night long and then waking us up early this morning, Lord, opening our eyes and we was able to look around and all and everything was all good. Lord, all our family was well. We still had a roof over our head, Lord, and we just want to thank you right now, Lord. Lord, we thank you that if the enemy tried to come in last night, Lord, you set up a standard for him and he couldn't get in, Lord. We thank you for continuing to build a fence up around us, Lord. 
Right now, Lord, we ask you to look down and look within us, Lord. And if you find anything in us that's not like you, Lord, we ask you to remove it. I said if you find something, but I know you will find something that, that's not like you. And I said remove it, Lord, not us. Because, Lord, we know we all got some things inside that need to be worked on. So right now, Lord, make us and mold us, Lord. And when you make us and mold us and find it and remove it, Lord, use us in the upbuilding of your kingdom. This is our prayer to you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Not going to be long this morning. Amen. I want to say again, uh, I, I miss my church family. Amen. And, and I welcome your calls. I welcome. Call me. Call me. Please call me. Amen. So we can have conversation about our opening back up and when we should open back up. Amen. This morning, I would like for you to turn with me to the New Testament of the book of Matthew. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Amen. Amen. And I will be reading Matthew 11. Oh. 25 through 30. Matthew 11, 25 through 30. And it reads, At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to bring some good news this morning. And I just want to talk about using a topic. Let Christ bear your burdens. Let Christ bear your burdens. Jesus' compassion is displayed repeatedly throughout the gospel. There are stories where Jesus always shows his compassion. He looked upon people with compassion. When is the last time that you looked upon somebody with compassion. In today's passage, he shows loving concern by inviting us to come to him for relief. Now, I know all of us today need some type of relief. With all the things going on around us in the world, some of us, many of us, possibly all of us, need some type of relief. Is there anything more needed in this world than the feeling of being set free this morning, free from whatever is weighing us down. Jesus invites us to come, take his yoke upon us, and learn from him. When you first look at this scripture, a yoke may sound like an additional burden, but to understand what Jesus means, what he is talking about, we have to look at this these verses from the historical context. Uh, a yoke was a bar that fitted over the neck and shoulders of two animals, uh, cattle, oxen, two animals. And, and, and when a heavy load had to be moved, transported, two oxen, two cattle, they were yoked together. And thereby, when being yoked together, the weight was distributed uh, evenly between them. There wasn't no more on one than the other. 
the, 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 the burden was balanced out. What our Lord is describing here is a lifelong process. And it surrounds coming to him for salvation and learning to know him. You got to know his perfect character, his priorities for life, and his plans for us in the world. Jesus is asking us to place ourselves under the yoke of his lordship. He, he promises a life of, of submission that will fit us well and provide relief. How many of you need some relief this morning? Our Savior offers to be with us in every trial that we face. Sometimes he removes the difficulty that weighs us down, while at other times he lifts the burdensome feelings that accompany our trials. But there will be occasions when he walks with us through the hardship and suffering. Sometimes you just have to go through it. As my grandmama used to tell you, you made that bed, now you got to lay in. But guess what? He promised to lay in the bed with us. Amen. Amen. He'll lay there giving us the grace and strength to endure the hardship that we're going through. Even then, we will discover that his yoke is easy and his burden is light because his compassion and mighty power can carry us through. Today, today, Jesus is calling to all lives matter. Black lives matter. White lives matter. Black power, soul power, yellow power, green power. He is calling out to all humanity. He is offering rest for all of our weary soul. The invitation that Jesus is sending forth in this hour in which we live in, he is summoning all of us that are weary and heavy laden. Those of us who are tired of just spinning their wheel, those of us who are tired of just going around in circles, he is calling to those who are looking for hope, peace that surpasses all understanding. Somebody out there wants some everlasting joy. It can be found and even in this chaotic world that we're living in. And if this describes you this morning, Jesus is calling you to come to him and he will receive you unto him. Today, today is the day to enter into the presence of the Lord. The Bible said that entryway is a only way through Jesus. Jesus alone. John 14 and 6 said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. 1 Timothy 2 and 5 said, There is one God, one mediator, who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He is today our release. We were not created to be self-sufficient. I need you. You need me. We need to be dependent on God in all our ways. We ought to trust the Lord with all our heart, lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Remember, there is a way that seems right to man, but that way, the Bible said, leads to death and destruction. Today is a day to cast off all the weight that's been holding us down. Today, you can get rid of the regrets of past sins. Even some of us have some present sin that we can get rid of right now. Those circumstances of life that, that some of us have been trying to hide. Some of us have been trying to handle on our own. We're trying to do it apart from God and, and we keep falling. We keep falling. If we bring them to Jesus on the day and cast them at his feet, I guarantee you, 
you will have the rest that you have been searching for. Regardless of your past and current sin, God is summoning you to his throne of grace and mercy right here on today. He is saying, come my child. Today is a day that you can be delivered and set free from all the guilt, all the shame and all the pain that has come along with the hurt that you have been endured. Good news. The good news on today is that the deep, empty void in your soul can be filled. And it can be filled with spirit, spiritual things through Christ Jesus. There's a lot of hatred going on right now. A lot of opposition toward each other. Racism, some of us have never seen the world in so much turmoil. But we need to be filled today with spiritual things. And the only way we can be filled with spiritual things is through Christ Jesus. A lot of us try to follow the world and be filled, but the world's feeling is only temporary. And once you use it up, you require to be filled over and over and over again. And all the pleasures of the world are of no benefit to our soul. Our soul needs spiritual things. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me good. Jesus made this promise to you on today. Everyone that hearing me today, I am pleading. Jesus said, whosoever believe on me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Many of us think that we're here forever. We, we think we're indestructible. We don't even think about uh, 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 that 30, 40, 50 years, 10 years, we may be gone. But we are only sojourners here. We are pilgrims passing through this place. This is not our home. And Jesus is trying to offer us an exchange today for our sins, an exchange today for our burdens, an exchange for our cares. And we can have his everlasting love, Lord help us, his everlasting grace, his everlasting peace, and mercy today. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Will you believe Jesus on today? Will you trust him and take him for his word today? Jesus said, all things are possible to them who believe. Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Jesus will help you with your unbelief, but there must be a starting point today. Will you come to Jesus for your much needed rest on today? As I get ready to close, he, he died over 2,000 years ago. He died so that you and I may find rest in him alone. He died so that we would be able to get up on today. Jesus loved us enough to die for us. When have you loved somebody enough to die for them? That right there is enough to start making our way to him right now. As I closed my, one of my nephews, we was talking about uh, the thing that going on in the world, we, we never seen the likes of things like that. And out of the conversation came one of the old sayings 
Oh, uh, that uh, our grandfather, our foreparents used to say. You know, in the community years ago, if, if I had, you had. They used to have hog killings, and and, and they would uh, uh, have a hog killing in the community and kill hogs and give everybody a little portion of the the meat in order to to to, to clean the hog properly. They will get a big black pot and put the wood up under there and get the water to boil it so hot. The water will get so hot. That, that, that you just put it in there and, and, and it'll clean, just clean the hog right in. You can ease, ease the scraping and everything off. Some people have found out that with everything going on today, the water is hot in this world right now. And, and, and black people are going back, getting stuff three, five, ten years ago that should have been handled then. But the water is hot right now. And, and, and so you can put it in the water right now and get it taken care of. You look at that thing that went on, young people that was killed by police and things that happened four, five years ago. That's back getting put in the pot because it's being handled now. God is saying to us right now, the water is hot. If you come to me right now, give me all the care. You got to come to me through Jesus Christ, though. And once you come to me, you'll learn how to get your rest daily. You'll learn how to study your Bible. You'll learn how to have that intimate relationship and spend personal time alone with God in prayer. And you'll learn that prayer changes things. You'll learn how to obey the leading of God's Holy Spirit. God has made a plea to us today through his holy word, the Bible. Now, it's up to you to believe and act upon what he said and you do it by faith or either you deny it and receive it not. Your role to healing and restoration can begin right now. What will your choice be? As I close, the Lord said, come to me. Is there anybody out there in the Facebook Live world that want to come to the Lord right now? He's standing with his arms wide open. He's saying, come, my child. And I will give you the rest. The rest that no alcohol, no drug, no, no companionship uh, through man can give you. The, the rest that no book, no, no can give you. Will you come today? Will you come today? I thank God for another opportunity and another chance. If you want to come today, God has made it real simple. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. And I want that rest that you have, have called out to me to receive and accept. Lord, help me to be the man, the woman, the boy, or girl that you're calling me out to be. Lord, Lord, pick me up. Dust me off. And mend me up and use me in the upbuilding of your kingdom. And Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. If you have said that and you received that in your heart, God is waiting on you to move now, right now. Find you a church that's preaching God's holy word. Amen. I didn't say Baptist, Methodist, and Pentecost. I say a church that's God that is preaching God's holy word. That's what you're going to need, and God will do the rest. Amen. In these trying days that are ahead of us, remember that everything you need is found in the book. Pick up the book. Read the book. Make that an old fab, old lie that the 
they tell you, if you want to hide anything from a black man, put it in a book. Pick this book up and read it. It's life changing. May God bless you and may God keep you. I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Until next week, the good news is signing off. Amen.